In example two, we're going to be exploring the difference between displacement calculations and distance calculations, particularly when a particle changes direction. So in example E2, we've got a particle moving with the velocity shown. And in part A, we want to find the displacement from the starting point after five seconds. If we want to find a displacement between the start and five seconds, well, that implies that we're looking for a change in displacement from t equals 0 to t equals 5. So we can do a definite integral to begin with to find this change in displacement. So starting with our expression for the velocity, we're going to integrate to find the displacement. And as it's a change in displacement, we're going to integrate between t equals 0 and t equals 5. So we can just pop this into our calculator. And that gives us minus 125 over 12, which is minus 10.4 if we round to three significant figures. In part B, we need to find the times when the particle is at instantaneous rest and also sketch the velocity time graph for the particle. So to find the times when the particle is at instantaneous rest, we need to consider when the velocity is zero. We can then solve this equation by factorising. First of all, every term has a common factor of t, so we can factorise that. And then we can factorise the quadratic to get t minus 5 and t minus 2. So v equals naught when t equals 0, 5 or 2. Now, generally speaking, this will be fine for your answer, but we should probably mention that, strictly speaking, the answer could potentially only be t equals 2 and t equals 5, because at t equals 0, the particle is not necessarily instantaneous rest, although it is at rest. But for the purposes of this question, I'm just going to leave my answer as it is. In the next part, then, we need to sketch the velocity time graph. So we'll start with a pair of axes. And from the calculations we did in part 1, we know that there are roots at 0, 5 and 2. We also know we've got a cubic graph which has a positive leading coefficient. It's positive t cubed. That means the shape of it will be something like this. So filling in that information, we've got a positive cubic starting at the origin and it goes through 2 and 5. Make sure you don't draw anything to the left of t equals naught because we're talking about a particle moving in time and negative time in this sense would have no meaning. Also, if you encounter a similar question where the graph crosses the vertical axis, make sure you mark that point on your graph as well as the horizontal axis intersections. Moving on to part C, we need to find the distance traveled by the particle during the first five seconds. So in this part, we're looking to find the distance as opposed to the displacement that we found in part A. It's still over the first five seconds, and we need to see how we would do that differently. Recall that in part A, we found the displacement between t equals 0 and t equals 5. And to do that, we simply did an integral between 0 and 5. It didn't matter that some of the curve was above the x-axis and some of the curve was below the x-axis. To help understand that, let's consider the trajectory the particle follows. First of all, between 0 and 2, it's travelling in one direction. Then between 2 and 5, it's travelling in the opposite direction. So when we're considering the distance travelled, if we just did one big integral, we would find that the area above the x-axis would cancel out with the, some of the area below the x-axis. So in order to find the distance, we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to label the two regions d1 and d2, distance 1 and distance 2. And if we want to find the total distance, we want to find the total area under the graph. So we need to do two separate integrals. The first distance, we're going to integrate between 2 and 0. And that will already be positive. 
Let's pop that one into our calculator. So the distance traveled between 0 and 2 is 16 thirds. We'll leave that as an exact value because that's not the answer we're trying to find. It's just going to help us get towards the answer. For the second distance, I'm going to anticipate the fact that I know the answer will be negative, but really I want the absolute value. I want the positive version. So I'm going to put a minus sign in before the integral because I know the answer to the integral will be negative. So this time we'll have the same integral, but between the limits two and five. To save time, I can just reuse the calculation I did on my calculator last time, just changing the limits. So the answer to the integral is minus 63 over four, but as we've got a minus sign in front of our calculation, we're gonna make the answer positive. So 63 over four. Now that we've got the two separate distances, we can find the total distance. It will be 16 over 3 plus 63 over 4, which gives us 253 over 12, or 21.1 to 3 significant figures. Finally, in part D, we're going to find the average velocity and the average speed of the particle. So let's have a look at what the difference is between calculating average velocity and average speed. To answer this question, we need two formulae. We have the average velocity is displacement over time taken, and we have average speed is distance over time taken. So we have this information from earlier in the question. We know the distance that was traveled was 21.1 meters. And we know the displacement over the same time was minus 10.4 meters, with the time being five seconds. So the average speed will be 21.1 divided by five, which is 4.22 meters per second to three significant figures. And the average velocity will be minus 10.4 divided by five, which is negative 2.08 meters per second to three sig fig. Okay. Problem P2 is of roughly the same difficulty as the one I've just done. I'd like you to pause the video for a second, have a go at it, and then come back and check your solution against mine. Okay, let's attempt P2 then. So we've got a particle moving with the velocity shown, and it passes point A when t equals zero. And we want to, first of all, find the times when the velocity of the particle is zero. So starting with our expression for the velocity, we'll set it equal to zero. Now, it is possible to factorise this quadratic. You might, first of all, for example, times it by 20 and do it that way. There's a t in every term, so you can pull that out as well. Instead, though, I'm simply going to solve it on my calculator. So from the main menu, I'm going to go into Equation Solver, which is mode A. I'm going to go into Polynomial, which is F2. And the degree is 3 because it's a cubic expression. And I'm going to enter 0 0.05 for the cubic term minus 1 for the quadratic, 4.8 for the linear term, and 0 for the constant. That tells me the solutions are 0, 8, and 12. In part B, I need to sketch the velocity time graph for the particle. So I know my roots are 0, 8, and 12. And I know I've got a positive cubic because I've got a positive t cubed term. So I'm going to have this shape. So starting from zero, I'm going to go up, down, up. Remember not to draw anything below zero. And I'm going to label eight and 12 on the horizontal axis. And there's my sketch. In part C, I need to find the total distance traveled during the first 12 seconds. 
So just like in the example, I've got two separate regions to my graph. I've got one region I'll call D1 where the curve is above the axis and another region I'll call D2 where the curve was below the axis. So to find the total distance traveled, I'm gonna find D1 and D2 separately and then add the magnitudes of those values together. So D1 will simply be the integral between zero and eight of V. Putting that into my calculator gives me 512 over 15. For D2, I can anticipate that the integral would give me a negative answer and I want the magnitude and so I can do minus the integral between 8 and 12. So the integral gives me minus 16 thirds, so my answer is just positive 16 thirds. So the total distance is 512 over 15 plus 16 thirds. Which to three significant figures gives me 39.5 meters. Just to wrap up this example problem pair, I'd just like to point out that in this question, it's been set up so that it walks you through the steps that you have to do. You find the sketch of the graph, then you find the distance. It's worth bearing in mind that you may get a more difficult question, which simply asks you to find the total distance traveled given an equation like this. And you need to make sure you spot for yourself that this is a curve that crosses the axis where some of it is above the axis and some of it is below. A good tip to help you with that if you're using your graphical calculator is before you start a question like this, particularly if it's worth quite a few marks, sketch the graph on your graphical calculator. Then you'll be able to see, does it cross the axis in the region I'm interested in? And you won't get caught out with that mistake.